Hello everyone, welcome back to Obsessive Preparazi. I am doing the release video of my 10 bucks a week food prep challenge. Now I released this videos, the video series over a year and a half ago. This video is week five on building your food preps up, your prepper's pantry, your SHTF food storage, long-term food storage, whatever you want to discuss, I show you how to build those preps up on 10 bucks a week. Yes, 10 bucks a week, because I want to show people that have never prepped before, if you're beginners, maybe you are preppers and it's things that you don't think about, on how you can do it reasonably without going out and buying a bunch of long-term food storage, survival foods. To me, that's a waste if you do not have a well-stocked pantry. I have a cousin that just emailed me and wanted me to help her in South Carolina on building her family a prep pantry for six people. And she asked me, and I'm like, don't do anything until you discuss it with me because I think it is crazy to go out and buy bucket meal, survival food, that kind of thing if you don't have a well-stocked pantry. Once you have a well-stocked pantry, then you can start working into bulk items and build your food preps up for longer-term food storage. Now, I have my doors. Now, if you've watched my videos, you know I have like food preps everywhere. I don't show everything that I have. I try to show you a glimmer of what I've got just so that you can get the ideas of how I store things. But you know, if you're a prepper, you know that you know you don't have just one location, you've got several. And uh, you know, my finger kind of goes up to the people that say they're gonna come get your food preps. Sorry, that's just me. You know, nobody knows what's gonna happen. And the people that watch these videos that are not preppers always look at doomsday scenarios. And as a prepper, you can't just look at a doomsday scenario chaos out in the street. They're going to come break into your house because I'm telling you as a normal day-to-day -day life, you will work into your preps somewhere in your life and doomsday never happened. But that doomsday could be something like a medical. Something happened in your family. You lose your job over medical or a loss of income coming in. Jobs are really short supply right now. You know paychecks are not coming in. So this is the reason why you want your preps. Natural disasters, things like that. And so I try to show you in my series how to do different things. From number 10 cans that I've got back here, putting things in mason jars up here, or buying more bulk like I have back here. I try to show you different things. And as a prepper, I do not do just one thing. I do not just put it, um, let me see, in Mylar bags. I do a little bit of everything. And you're questioning why do I do that? Because one, you do not know natural disaster. Okay, hurricanes, if you, or earthquakes, you know, if you've got everything in glass, you know, you could make it more stable. But if you had everything in glass, you can definitely look at that as being lost, possibly. Number 10 cans, water, moisture, that may rot out. But we know rodents will never get into number 10 cans. Rodents will never get into mason jars. They definitely can gnaw through mylar. But this is an option for people that do not have these other options. Mylar, oxygen absorbers, and putting your product in mylar. A rodent. Buckets like this, they could sit there and gnaw until they get through. So this is the best option for you, putting them in five gallon buckets, garbage cans, things like that. But you always have to think. So if you're going to store things, think about rodents, have pest control, have mice traps, rat traps, things like that in your preps. Do not just wait till the very thing where we have a disaster and then you've got this issue and you have no storage of these kind of things. So these are ideas that I wanted to show you. I still have my onions hanging back here. I did a video on how to store onions. I'll leave that up here for long term. We are, I did this video in May. I got a huge amount of onions. I put them in pantyhose and we are January 2021, 
2021, yeah, January 2021, and they are still great. I will show you one Instagram. If you follow me on Instagram, I'll cut into one and I'll show you. They're still great seven months later. Is it seven months? Yeah, seven months later. I still have onions that I have in my stores. So it gives you options on storing onions, things like that. So we're going to go ahead and get on into this week five food prep challenge. Again, it's 10 videos. Keep an eye out for them because I want you to learn how to build your preps up smartly. When I say smartly, is that a word? I don't know. I just want you to do it smart. Enjoy the series. Whoops, sorry, not quite done yet. Can't get into that challenge yet. I wanted to discuss water. Just a simple item like oatmeal. Now in this can, there's 27 cups of oatmeal in this can. Water supply, you always have to think, if you're storing all this dried pasta, quinoa, all this needs to be reconstituted. You need to have water and know how you're going to get water. So that is one of the biggest things you need to always think about. More than food, you need to think about water supply. And so a can like this, 27 cups, will take almost two gallons of water. Two gallons, that's a lot. So keep this in mind, water, water purification, tablets, filters, Berkey water system, going to a canal, your pool, how are you going to get water? Go, you know, these are things, capture rainwater. Do you have a way to capture rainwater when it's raining? Purification, things like that, keep in the back of your mind. Okay, let's go ahead and get on into the series. Welcome back to Obsessive Prep Raisy. We are on our week five of our 10 buck a week food challenge. And if you're new to the channel, if you haven't seen this series, what we are doing is building food storage up for $10 a week. That's right, $10 a week. It was a challenge given to me. And this is for people that have never prepped before or you preppers out there that just need a little reminders. And maybe you didn't even think about it. I learned so much from everybody else my subscribers and comments and I like to give that information back out to you I'm hoping I'm helping you out with this 10 buck a week challenge to help you think about what you need for food storage what you might not need we may have people out there that have dietary problems that they can't have these certain items or let's just say you do not like spam change it up use a different product what I'm trying to show you is how to build your food storage up that you can have shelf stable food, sustainable, that we can build our preps up one, two, three, four weeks, couple months, and then more down the road. And we started with the basics. If you haven't seen my series yet, I highly recommend you to go check out weeks one, two, three, and four. That will give you an idea of what we've got here. Your simple ingredients of flours, sugars, baking soda, baking powder, oils that we can make breads from, muffins from, oatmeal that we can add to our muffins, cookies. We have pastas that we can have different meals with. Instead of just filling up a five gallon bucket of one style of pasta, we're building different things because I truly believe in an SHTF situation or if you lost your job, if all you were eating was the same foods over and over again, you're gonna be miserable. Many people out there, and I've had several subscribers truly believe in the seven week meal process. And by doing that, you're only worrying about seven different kinds of meals. And so if you're trying to build up a year food supply, you would, for one day of that meal, you would purchase 52 jars of sauces and 52 boxes of pasta. And then one day a week, that's what you eat. And you plan around seven meals. I'm not that way. I'm not going to ever be that way. I like variety. I've always liked variety. So this, again, is just individual needs and desires, wants. Absolutely, in an SHTF situation, you're not going to give three hoots about if your products are GMO rice, 
GMO corn, or if all you have is a bunch of rice, all you're going to be thinking about is eating and consuming. And that can of spam that you don't normally eat, you probably will be eating. So in my 10 buck a week challenge, I'm trying to build up meals and add proteins in with your carbohydrates. I have quinoa in here that is an awesome source of carbohydrates and better for you. I have 15 bean soup mixes. So we're building up our preps with beans in different varieties. So I have a Cajun dried Alfredo mix that you can make. And with your food stores, your dried powdered milk or your evaporated milk, you can make the sauce for the Alfredo. So these are things by having these ingredients, we have now built up a decent food storage so we can now amp up are quantities of certain items, but I'm always going to be throwing in a can of protein somewhere. I also in several videos show you how different ways to store your product in food saver bags. You can check a video out on how to store in food saver bags. If you've watched my series, I'm very big on mason jars. I like mason jars because rats and bugs can't get into them. And so I believe the first investment in purchasing your mason jars, in purchasing a food saver, purchasing your attachments. Check these videos out because I show you so much that you can do with a food saver. But by having a food saver, you can definitely make your product shelf stable and no rodents or bugs can get into it. But if you do not want to store in mason jars, you want to do food saver bags, mylar bags. Check this out. Out of my stores, I have this bucket for rice aroni. So come along and I'm going to show you what I've got. Okay, so I have my bucket out. Now going into the fifth week of our 10 buck a week challenge, what do I have here? I have five boxes of rice aroni for 98 cents a piece. I have a can of turkey spam. Again, flavors, variety. I've got one more can of tuna and I have two pounds of lentils. This actually comes out to exactly $10.01. My plastic tote. We talked about food saver bags, storing in mason jars, but I've also got mylar here. So if you look at my other videos, my food storage room, I store all sorts of ways. And I get comments of people saying, well, you need to do it this way. You need to do it this way. You need to watch my videos because I do it every way. I do firmly believe in the food saver, but for my long-term food preps or certain items like this, I do use Mylar. I do have buckets. So in my Mylar here, I put these in the bag on 312. And what I do here is I say rice aroni, one box each. I have two pounds and I have a Mexican, a fried rice, a pilaf, a wild rice, and a Spanish rice. So what I have done is I've taken them out of their boxes and I've made them shelf stable. Reason why I put my rice aroni in smaller bags is because I figure once you open this up, you've only opened up, let's call it a week worth of food and to keep bugs out of. And so I break things down, I put them into smaller packages and I'm able to open this up when my stores run low, put it into my shelves and I rotate this. I did bunches of this in 2012 and I'm still using this. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up and show you what I've done. Also, I have four packages left into this bin. And now that I'm running low, rice aroni is one of the things that I'm going to think about redoing and putting back in my buckets and updating the stuff that I've used. All right, getting into my Mylar bag here. I'm OCD if you have not noticed, and what I do is probably extremely overboard, but it's what I do and it's what worked out for me. In my Mylar bag, I had an oxygen absorber, just in case I didn't get this sealed correctly. Now I have my rice roni, and it is plastic wrapped, 
And the reason why I did plastic wrap, surround wrap around it, is I didn't want any pointy edges to puncture holes into my mylar. And especially if you're in a moving situation where you're going to have to move your food preps around, you don't want things to get punctured. So I just use surround wrap. I get an industrial box at Sam's Club or a restaurant supply, and I just wrap the heck out of my products before I put it in the mylar. We have five bags of rice aroni. Now, my food saver, when I use it, it sucks the oxygen out. But again, because I'm OCD and I overdo everything, I also put an oxygen packet in just in case it didn't seal properly. Or, I don't know, because I'm a freak. Let's just say that. So I have my fried rice. I wrote the date on it. My rice pilaf. My Spanish rice my wild rice, and my Mexican rice. Now I use these all the time and I rotate them. So am I worried because I put these in food saver bags in 2012? Absolutely not. It's 2019, it's been exactly seven years. Another tip that I do, if I put them in, I write down how much water. We all know that if you make a rice aroni, you use like two tablespoons of butter and you brown it or olive oil. And then, but the one thing I was concerned about on each package was how much water to add. And so I went ahead and wrote that down at the bottom. So this is, this is where personal preference comes into. Do you want to store something like the rice aroni this away? You can leave it in on the boxes. My problem with rice aroni is in the box, it's loose rice. And so it's not shelf stable because bugs can get to it. And by having it in food saver bags, no issue. I also wanted to show you that I've had people ask, do I dry can things? Heat to kill the larvae off one thing or another. As long as there's not any oxygen present, your food is going to be perfectly fine. The bugs aren't going to grow. Now let's just say you open it up, it, they could start hatching, I doubt it, but you're going to open it up and you're going to go ahead and cook it. And if there's anything in it, you're going to eat it, just consider it extra protein. Now where rice aroni is loose in the box, suddenly salad isn't. And I showed this on my week four challenge where I purchased and I put in a mason jar, suddenly salad. Now your suddenly salads, you could definitely keep them on the shelf. They're not gonna be rodent free, but they will be pest free. Now when I put my pasta in this jar, I went ahead and cut the label out so I know what I have. I put the directions on the back, I put the month and the year I did this. Also, I went ahead and cut a hole into the pasta package and the season package so I could get all the air out of my jar and the packages because there's still a little bit of air left in, but by doing this, you're removing all the oxygen. So your decision, do you want to leave it in the box? Do you want to do it this way? Do you want to put it in food saver bags? Okay, I think I covered rice aroni completely on storage and what you might want to do with it. For my 10 buck a week challenge, I'm doing my five boxes of rice aroni, my can of tuna, another protein, my spam, and my lentils. Now going back to the spam, there is a ton of flavors of spam out there. This is turkey, so I can make a meal with this. I can cube it, I can mix it in with one of my boxes of rice aroni, or some of my rice or my pasta back here. You could have a turkey alfredo by using alfredo sauce, your white rice, and cube up your turkey spam. Spam has so many different flavors and varieties of Spam anymore. There's a teriyaki Spam. You could cube that and make a teriyaki stir fry with Spam. So thinking outside the box. Now, for all of you haters out there of Spam, think about another protein that you like that you can store. I'm only giving you suggestions. I'm gonna go ahead and get my lentils in a jar, suck the oxygen out of them. Now lentils are an excellent source of complex carbohydrates. They're high in fiber and one cup of lentils will give you 230 calories. So again, think about variety. Now you may not like lentils or your family doesn't like them. Think about different products that you can put in your food preps to make 
different meals instead of the same thing. But I always say, purchase what your family eats. I know in an SHTF situation, if you hate rice, and that's all you have, you're gonna be miserable. I know you're gonna eat it, but your mind's not gonna be there because you're gonna be miserable. What you need to do is store the food that you will eat. So here is our week five of our 10 buck a week food preppers challenge. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe. And if you wanna be notified for future videos, ring the bell. Have a blessed day. So going back to options, now I showed you how I stored rice seven years ago in my food saver bags. But then another option for us, I'm going to individually wrap each of my rice aronis with plastic wrap. Tuck in my, et, my ends and wrap those up. things you've got to think about by putting them in a food saver bag with an O2 or with your food saver you're literally sucking the oxygen out so it is air free what will make a longer shelf life but also food saver bags are expensive so you could also use pint sized jars to store your rice aroni now by doing it the way I'm doing it right now we're not we're not free of oxygen but we are making it shelf stable, rodent free. We're putting it in a mylar bag, which is dark, and we're gonna store it in a dark, cool place. So that's a positive by doing it this way. If you don't have a food saver and all you're using is mylar bags. I have my mylar bag and I'm gonna go ahead and get the boxes inside. I went ahead and put three on their sides this way. And I'm, going to, and I'm going to stack the other two. Now, God willing, I've got enough room for my food saver bag that I can actually suck the oxygen out. Okay, there I go. Now the only other thing I could have done was put O2s in this and sealed it out. But I think we'll be perfectly fine by just storing it this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and put five 2019 on this. I will put it in my bucket and we've got it stored. This is another difference of storing is by keeping the boxes, you've got a much bigger package than versus taking it out of the boxes and storing it in your food saver bags.